But he turns me over ministries incorporated. We were founded on John 3.16 and John 3.17, God's salvation plan for everyone. John 3.16 tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. It does not say for a select few. It says for everybody, anyone, everybody, everyone who believes in him shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. While this ministry does not condemn nor judge another man's religion, we do occasionally go after Christianity. Because once again, some religions don't know no better, but Christians, we do know better. And then what I'm gonna talk about tonight, you're gonna to see exactly what I mean by that. Christians, we know better. We do know better. Prayers tonight is for everyone who is listening. I do this for you. You get that healing. The healing from God. The greatest healing there ever will be. Well, the only healing, I think, is from God. People is very much capable of doing it. That's how come he went to the cross. Whatever life that he took is for our healing. Now accept it. And say, thank you, God for the healing. Thank you, God, for the healing. <clears throat> thank, you <about, clears throat> thank you about this message tonight. <clears throat> I wanted to go through the three resurrections for the first three Sundays in October. Last week we cut due to the hurricane. But tonight I'm going to speak just a little about the first resurrection. The Bible tells us those that are dead, but before they died, they believed in God and Jesus. These will be the first people to rise. This is the first resurrection. They are going to rise. to be with him. As you will see tonight when I talk about the first resurrection, next week will be the second, and then the third week will be the third resurrection. While some believe there's only two resurrections, no, there are going to be three resurrections. A lot of Christians wants to be in the first resurrection. But as you can see, the second resurrection is just as important as the first resurrection. The first resurrection, like I said, those that are dead in Christ will rise first to be with him. This is the first resurrection. Now, as I'm talking about the first resurrection, he pointed me toward another message tonight that I'm going to go through right now. And I'm going to see how it can work in to these resurrections. He told me to go into this, comparing Sodom to today. What exactly were the sins of Sodom that made God so angry at them that he poured down fire and brimstone upon them? Now, you've heard me say this before. But I'm going to get into a little bit more intense tonight with it. Okay? For centuries, there was a question. Really, was it far in brimstone? They had a dig in Israel back in the 70s. And they found the city of Sodom. They found it. 
And they showed a slab of wire that was found inside of it. It had little holes in it. That to me looked like a shotgun. But it wasn't. They said around us was brimstone. So the story of Thor and Brimstone is true. They found proof of that. But what caused God to get so angry that he would do this? When Sodom and Gomorrah was supposed to be the most religious cities on the plain, they did he had a great deal against them. All of my life, I heard about how gays destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. People, that's not a true story. It is not. That is not true. But there was something going on in Sodom. It was the women. You've heard me speak of this before. It was the women. Because when you read on into that story, you will find that here are the sins of Sodom and her sisters. They were arrogant, self-centered. They didn't care about nobody else. They were the evil witches. And they worshipped idols. But still, would that cause foreign brimstone to come down on them? Read that last thing. They enticed the angels to come down and make out with them. They have sex with them. Because this was found written on the wall in Sodom. They enticed the angels to come down and make out with them. That is what caused him to get angry. Because you don't entice an angel to do such thing as that because it's very wicked, extremely wicked. Now, the men of Sodom, you've heard me say this before, they would do anything that the women would tell them to do. They would. But when these men come to Sod a lot that night, knocked on his door and told him to send them two angels out, people that has been a, a story that has been misquoted, for a thousand years. But I want you to get into reading that story one more time. One more time. Some say it was a bunch of gay men in Sodom. Then why would these gay men go out right after they did that and they couldn't get them two angels from Lot? So they went right out and killed a concubine. That's a man's mistress. And raped her to death and left her dead body on the doorstep of that man. Gays would never do that. Nowhere is it written that same-sex marriage was in Sodom and Gomorrah. It is not written because it was not there. So stop me blaming gays tonight for the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. That is not true. Now, we got that down. Now let's go over. When Jerusalem was first being built, he looks at them and says, O oh, daughters of Jerusalem, your sins are worse than Sodom. But God, what are we doing? They went right back and doing the things that Sodom did in that one is not taking care of the poor and needy. He had that against Jerusalem at one time. But they say, we're not nearly as bad as them. Oh, yes, you are. Because you knew what happened in Sodom. Why are you in it? Makes your sins worse than the sins of Sodom. Now, I want y'all to take all of that in your mind. Now, let's bring it up to the United States today. First of all, one of the greatest commitments that he gave us is to love 
thy neighbor. Mexico is our neighbor. Yet, they've been bust. Bust from where they're coming into Texas. Bust to New York, Chicago, Los Angeles. Washington, D.C. Because I've heard many a story why they've done that. But the true story is, they don't want them because they're poor and needy. What did the Bible tell us to do? Take care of the poor and needy. Yet they're getting them out of there and sending them on elsewhere because they don't want them. Your sins are worse than Sodom. Because we know about the sins of Sodom. Why are we into it today? Because that makes our sins worse than Sodom. Their sins are worse than Sodom. Because they knew about these sins, yet they're right into them. Making their sins worse than Sodom. Love thy neighbor. Take care of the poor and needy. Yet, they're claiming to be the world's greatest Christians. And look what they're doing. Your sins are worse than the sins of Sodom. Hurricanes are getting more intense today. We're living in a time of coronavirus. People, it might be a punishment to us because our sins are becoming worse than Sodom's. When you close the door on a poor and needy, yet claim to be a child of God, you're a liar, and the truth's not in you. Because a child of God would not do that. They would have to take care of the poor and needy. How dare them? To say that they are a child of God. Your sins are worse than the sins of Sodom. Can, can you see what I'm talking about? Your sins are worse than Sodom. If you do this, and that's the sins that destroyed Sodom. Then your sins are worse than Sodom. People, they, Sodom was a land that had everything. It was needed of nothing. Yet the poor and needy was dying at his gate. People, that's happening today. Right here in a nation that is supposed to be the biggest Christian nation on the earth. It's happening right here in this nation. The needy and poor from our neighbor is being treated something awful in the hands of Christian people. Sins are worse than those of Sodom. Bringing me back to the resurrections. The first resurrection is going to be those that truly is a believer in God. Truly is a believer in God. Those that love Him, those that does His commandments, these are going to be in the first resurrection. But those that live in the way of Sodom, not caring for their neighbor, is going to be in that third resurrection. The resurrection of evil. The third one is the resurrection of evil. And those are coming up pretty soon, two and three. A lot of Christians hope they're in the first resurrection. But you will see the second resurrection is just as important as the first one. You'll see that next week. But people, we've got to get out of these ways. We've got to really burn down with it. Do we want to be in the first and second resurrections? Or do we want to be in that third resurrection of evil? Because that's exactly where we're heading to the third resurrection. Seeing that we're a Christian, yet we treat them like dirt. They come in poor and needy. Their best sticks were because they don't want them. What if God 
God didn't want us. And he didn't send his son to the cross for us. What if that would have happened? What if it would have happened? But when you turn your back on the poor and needy, your sins are worse than the sins of Sodom. Because we know that that is one reason that Sodom went down. Yet we do it. Making our sins far worse than the sins of Sodom. He told them that day in Jerusalem, Oh, daughters, your sins are worse than Sodom. But, oh, Master, how can that be? And he showed them. You're falling right in the way of Sodom. Think about that. And let's love one another. And let's do what he tells us to do. To love one another. To take care of the needy and the poor. And stop being arrogant and self-centered. Texas, come out of it. Or you're going to be in the third resurrection. The resurrection of evil. Amen.